How's it going? I'm Anthony Todd, and today I'm going to show you how to calculate the maximum velocity with no friction involved on a banked curve. This is a very typical problem you'll see in any physics or AP physics class. Okay, the first thing we need to do is draw a free body diagram. So here we have a car on some sort of incline, okay? And it's incline with some angle theta as shown right here, okay? So now we know that this object does have a weight that's pulling straight down. And we also know that, that this car, there is a normal force. Well, in this situation, the normal force is offset with some angle theta as shown. Okay, and this is kind of where the magic comes in. If we were to take this triangle right here, and we'll pull this out, it makes it a little bit easier to see. We have our normal force. You will see that when you draw this out, that there is a normal force component in the y direction and there's a normal force component in the x direction, okay? So what's cool about this is if this is angle theta right here, that means this angle right here also has to be theta as well. So if you wanna solve, first thing I would suggest we do is let's solve for these two components in the x and y direction, okay? So the normal force in the x direction will be equal to, so if this hypotenuse is in, okay? and I'm looking for my x direction. <clears throat> so I have my hypotenuse and my opposite. That's actually gonna give me sine. So n sine of theta. The y direction will be n cosine of theta because I have the adjacent side and my hypotenuse. Now, if I have these, I'm pretty much good to go because the first thing we need to do is kind of split this up in X and Y. Now I know there is, example, going around this corner, there is a component of acceleration towards the center, okay? And in the X direction, let's go ahead and sum all these up. The summation of all my forces in the X direction, in example, the only thing I really have here is, um, example, I have this in, what do you call it? in sine of theta, and that is how much forces are going in the x direction, okay? And so what happens if, if I know those, well, the question is, well, what's all the forces in the x direction, okay? I know it's in sine theta. I can then figure out, okay, well, the object is actually going around a circle, okay? So you can imagine it's kind of going around this horizontal circle now, and I know that the acceleration around a circle is just v squared all over r, you can actually rewrite Newton's second law to give you the centripetal force equation, mv squared all over r, okay? And that's gonna equal all our forces in the x direction. And we set that equal to our normal force, which is just n sine of theta. Okay, so now we're kinda of getting somewhere. So this is gonna be all the x direction. So now let's do the same thing for the y direction. Now in the y direction, the summation of all my forces in the y direction must equal zero. They have to equal zero. And the reason being is the car really isn't going up the ramp or going down the ramp. It's just staying constant, okay? So if with that being said, I know that going up the ramp, I have my ny, which will be n cosine of theta. So I have n cosine of theta. So anything going up the ramp will say it's positive. And I do have this weight component pulling down the ramp, so minus W equals zero. So with this being said, I can now kind of plug in some variables. I know my weight is just equal to mg, so n cosine of theta is equal to mg. This weight component popped over. Remember, weight is just mass times gravity. And I can now solve for n. Well, n is equal to mg over cosine of theta. So I now know what my normal force is. So now I'm gonna take this, okay, this normal force, and I'm going to plug them together. So first you need to solve it for the x direction, which we did, and then we solve it for the y direction, which we have, and then you take this normal force and you plug it in right here. So now I have this, mv squared over r is equal to mg all over cosine theta times sine theta. 
okay? And now, the equation really starts to work itself out. We can go, I'm gonna go ahead and see right here that, the, that these masses will cancel out. So I'm left with this, V squared over R is equal to G sine theta divided by cosine theta. And we actually see here that the trig identity, sine theta divided by cosine theta actually gives us tangent of theta, okay? So I can go ahead and rewrite this as V squared over R equals G tan theta, okay? So now solving for the maximum velocity the car can go around any corner will give me GR tan theta square rooted, okay? And this is the actual equation for the maximum velocity a car can go around a bank curve with no friction, okay? So I hope this video helped, and if so, give me a thumbs up and a like, and please check out my other video if you're interested in figuring out how fast a car can go on a bank curve with friction, and what's the minimum velocity, so how far it can slide down, okay? So if so, thank you for this, and give me a thumbs up, and subscribe for more physics content. Have a great day.